Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at this, and uh, this is a smoke alarm, but uh, it's not this particularly we're interested in, it's the label that comes with it. And uh, here is the label, and you can see uh, it's just intended to stick onto the consumer unit and indicate which circuit the alarm is attached to. But what's on the bottom edge of that there, which actually says do not mega alarms. Now, what this really means is do not attach a high voltage insulation tester to that circuit. Those generally operate about 500 volts because 500 volts could in fact damage this and of course uh, maybe other stuff that was connected elsewhere as well. So is that actually the case? So what we're going to do is to take this thing and uh, attach uh, 500 volts to it and see what actually happens. Now here's the label that comes with these uh, smoke and heat alarms. It's uh, been the same pretty much forever. And the idea is you put this one on the circuit breaker and then this one goes on the consumer unit with the date and how many there are and so on. And at the bottom here it's got uh, this warning which is what we're looking at here. So it says do not mega alarms. Now not really the best uh, choice of wording there because uh, mega like certain other things has turned to use basically a uh, insulation resistance test. So what it means is do not insulation resistance test the circuit while the alarms are connected because in theory if you apply the 500 volts DC to a piece of equipment then of course that might damage it because 500 volts DC is of course very different from 230 volts AC and of course aside from that it would obviously give you a false reading anyhow because if you're testing with some kind of load on the end that load is going to show up as a fault. So what I've got here is a uh, smoke alarm. This is an ionisation version, tending to go a bit out of uh, use now, but you can still buy these. This is one with a 9 volt battery backup, so mains powered via the base, and then uh, battery in there in case of mains failure. And the advantage of these ones is they're the cheapest available type. Disadvantage, of course, is you have to replace this 9 volt battery every three or four years, or however long it actually lasts. And bearing in mind that even if the mains never fails, batteries all have an expiry date on the side. This particular one is from March last year. So even if the battery wasn't used, it is still going to want replacing at various intervals. The better types, uh, which are probably more common now, are the mains powered and they have a rechargeable battery inside, but the battery is permanently in there. It's a lithium uh, type of arrangement, so you can't actually remove it and it doesn't need replacing for the life of the alarm, which in the case of these and most others is 10 years. Now the reason I've got this one is because it's an expired one. It says on the side here, replaced by February 2019. So of course uh, over 10 years old, as the list is being made in 2020. If you haven't seen these before, these are made by ACO. And uh, the way these work is that this part goes on the ceiling. You've got the various fixing holes there for whatever you want. And the wiring comes in the back here. Just use a bit of flex here for testing purposes. Generally they would have your circuit wiring from the fixed installation coming in there. Protective inductor here with the earth uh, connection there. Doesn't actually go to anything else, it's just a terminal for either putting the wire into something and if you have multiple items on the circuit that obviously can join the two wires together so continues throughout. Line and neutral there obviously for the supply of 230 volts AC and then this white one in the middle marked IC or interconnection that's used to go just between this alarm and say another one the idea then is if this alarm sounds, it then also sounds the others on the circuit as well. So a fire in one part of your house, all the alarms sound at the same time. And uh, that doesn't connect to either of these at all. It is purely just used to send a signal from this one to the others. So in this case, uh, just the line of neutral there. Earth connected there, which doesn't really say go anywhere. And nothing connected to that. And when these go on the ceiling, there's this little cover here which just uh, clips over like that and therefore once the alarm is removed there's no live parts exposed it's all uh, fully enclosed you can't obviously get your fingers in there and these alarms just have the prongs in there which slot into those and another nice feature of these is that when the battery is in here in this state the battery is not connected the battery is only connected once you snap it onto the plate which again means the battery won't run down when it's uh, obviously removed from there so uh, that's those, test button on the front and uh, green LED here for showing it's connected and the red one for various other indications. Now first of all we'll just connect this up to show uh, how it actually works. So, so bearing in mind that's normally on the ceiling, sort of upside down like that, and then this just snaps on. So uh, that will just place onto like that, and then it just clicks on like that. And here that sort of beep there as the battery was connected. And then the power just connects to these three things here. We use this uh, connection block here to attach those. This is called a cliff 
quick test if you want to buy one. They're available in various places and yes they're fairly expensive but obviously we don't generally buy them every day. So what we should get is a green LED here once we've uh, connected the power to the three. So there we go and we just about see in there the green LED glowing away because bearing in mind although this is over 10 years old it still works it's just the fact that the uh, components this side obviously are not guaranteed to respond to a fire as they would when they were new. So there we are all working so uh, nothing too surprising with that and uh, we're not going to press it because that makes horrible noise but uh, if we then disconnect the power you see the LED has gone out and now it's effectively running on battery only. Now in terms of testing what it means by mega is uh, not necessarily a piece of equipment with the word mega on it although that happens to be what we've got here but what it's really referring to is insulation resistance and in this case uh, it would normally be a 500 volt test on a 230 volt AC circuit or one designed for that and what this essentially does is applies around 500 volts to the conductors and uh, displays the actual resistance there. Now in this case there's nothing connected to it here, just got all open, so if we just did the test there it will basically show us the maximum value which is greater than 999 and note here is showing the test voltage of 545 volts, so that's between the probes over there. Now of course that's been nothing connected so uh, hardly a big surprise. Now for insulation resistance testing we don't actually need the blue neutral one, it's only the two connectors there so we'll just disconnect the uh, blue one and get rid of that. So uh, two wires there and if you were going to test a circuit with things still attached such as this smoke alarm or for example hundreds of downlighters or whatever else then what you can do is to test between the protective conductors and the green and yellow and then join both of the other two together normally you do this at your consuming unit or whatever so you can test between both of those linked and the protective conductor and that way you're not applying any voltage between the line of neutral so any load wouldn't actually be affected in the slightest and uh, we can just test that there and in this case we'll get the greater than 999 simply the fact that we're just testing that tiny short piece of flex and again we get that 545 voltage there which uh, obviously is uh, what we had previously but what that label's really on about is do not test between the two conductors so do not test between line and neutral when the alarm is attached or for that matter any other load because of course it will show up as a fault because that will obviously have a fairly low resistance compared to what you'd be looking for in terms of the uh, hundreds of mega ohms. So let's see what actually happens. So I'm going to get a low reading and there we go we're actually getting in the region of sort of 1.1 mega ohms and again we're still getting that 500 odd volts in there so pretty high. Will it damage it? Well who knows but uh, put that on for a moment there let's see if it still works so does it still work well let's see there you are. we should get a green LED in there and the answer is yes we do get a green LED so uh, that is still functioning even though we've shoved 500 volt odd up it but uh, bearing in mind there was a one mega ohm resistance showing on the end of that so almost no current actually flowed there so it uh, doesn't necessarily cause damage but obviously uh, something that's not necessarily going to be recommended. Now the presence of this thing in it uh, goes up to a thousand volts that would be a bit rude not to uh, try it on that setting so uh, let's do the absolute worst scenario here. Line in neutral there and for some reason someone's left it in the 1000 volt setting which is pretty much never used and uh, inexplicably we didn't remember to take any alarms away from the circuit or anything else so let's just see what we get there now we can hear that crackling a bit there and we can see the value is uh, still around that 1.2 mega ohms which is what we had before So we'll just disconnect that there. Now that certainly didn't sound good did it because there was that sort of crackling noise going on inside so uh, that may well have uh, damaged something but uh, nevertheless let's uh, just see if it still works or not. We don't necessarily need to connect the protective conductor because it doesn't go anywhere but uh, we'll connect it anyway because it avoids it uh, flapping around and going in places it shouldn't. 
course on a real circuit you would connect it because there may be say lights and other things on the same circuit which of course do uh, need that protective conductor. So that's uh, after the uh, 1000 volts crackle-o-matic. But as we see it still does light up green there so even though it made that crackly noise apparently uh, not been damaged although of course the LED on itself isn't a confirmation of it working. Well, it still beeps when you press the test button, so uh, I think the reality is that uh, it's not likely to be damaged when you shove 500 volts up it. I think, as the label suggests, you uh, really should disconnect it first, or uh, just say connect the line and neutral together and just test between the two and the uh, protective conductor. And of course you'd need to do that anyway if there were, say, things like downlighters or other equipment on the circuit anyhow, because obviously yeah. It could obviously cause those to be damaged and destroyed as well. Now while we've got this equipment out, I'll just show you another effect uh, which you may see sometimes when testing. If you connect a fairly low resistance across the end, we've got here a 47 ohm resistor, then what you actually get is rather different. So just do that without anything connected there, just open the circuit. And note that the test voltage there was 545, but if we connect this resistor here, so this would represent a very low resistance on the system, so perhaps some uh, appliance or whatever still connected. Let's see what happens now. We're going to get obviously a very low reading there. So no, we get pretty much zero, but also note that the voltage applied is zero as well. Now if we just do that again, you'll see the voltage uh, may go slightly above zero, but yeah, so it went to about 46 volts there, but then quickly dropped back down to zero. And that's because these, or this one in particular, doesn't shove out the 500 watts regardless of what's on the end. It's current limited, so if there is a low load on it, such as this 47 ohm resistor, the actual voltage applied will be extremely low to avoid shoving too much current through there, because if you had, say, a dead short there, trying to shove 500 volts there could result in a very large current flowing, which this thing probably wouldn't be able to supply as it's battery powered. I'll just demonstrate the same thing with this uh, Fluke tester. They all work in a similar way. If it's open the circuit, then again we get the 500 or greater than 500, that one, 522 volts. But if we connect that low ohm resistor there, sort of 47 ohms, again note the voltage is basically zero, simply the fact that it's limiting the output current just in the way that the other one did. So may not get damaged with the 500 volts there, but on the other hand uh, not a good idea to uh, shove 500 volts in them because of course it could cause damage. And also the fact the green light comes on isn't necessarily conclusive, but uh, the reality is that uh, there's not a lot of equipment that is going to be totally destroyed by 500 volts, and if it has anything in the sort of moderately low resistance range, the tester itself isn't going to even apply the 500 volts in the first place, so there you go. And if you are going to fit these things, uh, you can still buy these with a the battery in, but uh, really the ones with the lithium in are far better, because bearing in mind, over the 10-year life, you're going to have to buy three lots of batteries extra anyway, and if you're actually going to have to go somewhere to replace the battery and someone's paying for that, then that's already way over the cost of just putting the lithium ones in in the first place. So that's the uh, smoke alarm there, and say it might be damaged if you shove two 500 volts between the line and neutral. On the other hand, it might not be, but uh, probably not a good idea to do it anyway, but if you do, it's probably not the end of the world. And if you can't actually replace any of these, got like this one was, it was obviously over 10 years old, so life expired, then uh, there's no wiring involved, it's literally just to unclip the old one from the plate like that, new one just clips straight onto the exact same plate, as these plates have been standard off this uh, manufacturer for a considerable amount of time, and uh, say even the new ones with the lithium whatever fit on these plates as well. So uh, there we go, that's pretty much it for this video, next time we'll actually take this apart and see what's inside, but until then, thanks for watching.